In this video I want to give you a little overview over one of the first shots of the movie, which is 1-2-A. So this is the shot where Tom and Celia are arguing and she is waving her robot hand. Um, and it looks fairly simple at first, but there have been some challenges. For example, first of all, we had to track her arm in order to be able to attach the robot arm to her, um, to her arm. And then there has been some rotoscoping so that the robot arm can go behind her head. And then you cannot see that, but here in the first part of the shot, there have been people on the bridge who really thought they had to walk over this bridge while we were shooting there. So there had to be some cleaning and I want to show you um, how we did that. So uh, first I open up the shot. Actually, I'm going to open up the track file because that turned out to be quite complicated as you can see here on all these different versions. So I open up the track file. So this is how the shot looked like. She has her arm with all the markers and this tracking device. And then there are people here, this guy on the bicycle who thought he had to drive over this bridge while we were shooting there. So of course this had to be rotoscoped in order to be able to replace the background so that uh, we could put in uh, this robot arm. And the other thing is that the track didn't really work. I mean, you can see that here the solve error for the object track is quite good, but the result of that is not ideal. So if I play back here, you can see it's flipping like crazy. And I tried really hard to come up with a better solution for that. But the problem here is that the way that she is moving her arm doesn't give enough information or gives the wrong information or, ah, well, I don't know, it was just tricky. So here she is turning her arm so the perspective mark or the markers that provide the perspective below her arm are not visible and here you can see them but then if she is turning her arm you cannot see all these markers from the first part of the shot so ah, it didn't really work but the good thing is that in blender you can cheat a lot so um, after i show you the, the mask file i will show you how i came up with a track that works reasonably well Okay, so this is how the shot looks like. And then I open up the mask file. So first of all, what you can see here is the clean plate. So this has been painted inside Blender. And this is the plane that has been painted on. And Roman did all this. Actually, I think the background, it was me that had been painting that. But um, he did these things because the tricky thing is that first I have to switch back to the linear HDs because I didn't copy the 4k version. The thing is that this marker here was in front of her jacket and these things are in front of her sleeve unfortunately. So well that was very annoying but he was able to fix that by using hooks. So these are simple planes but he has attached empties to these vertices. And with these empties, he could move the thing so that it was matching the original footage. Just very quickly, if you don't know how to do that, um, I very quickly create a plane. So if you have any mesh object and select one vertex and say Control H, then you can attach a hook to that. So hook to new object. And now if you go out of edit mode, you can grab this empty and press G and grab that and thereby you can deform this plane. And that's how we did it here. So these are objects with the arm projected onto and then it has been animated frame by frame to match the movement of her arm. And then the background, of course, will fit to the footage because the camera track, which I didn't talk about yet, but the camera track was really easy. I mean, there is not really any camera movement. So the, the camera track was just a, a tripod solve. So the object track was complicated, but the camera, of course, was super simple. So there are some of these markers and the whole shot has been solved by using tripod motion. So the camera is moving, it's just rotating. And if you put anything in the background, then it will automatically fit to the footage. So if I press F12 to render that, it will, using uh, Blender internal, 
uh, it will render these clean plates to render layers. And here you can see the finished result. So let's have a look at the node tree. Um, so up here, this was my part. So we split it up. So I uh, removed the guy on the bicycle and then Roman did the more complicated stuff like this. So the marker removal and the rotoscoping of her head. So these are the masks for her jacket, then the arm, his arm, his hand, um, then defining the uh, her face, then uh, defining the region where the bicycle guy is removed in the first part of the shot. So here you can see is the guy on the bicycle. So here's the background plate. Uh, which is blurred a little bit. Then, of course, there is noise so that it fits to the noise pattern of the footage. Um, then there is something extra here for the background and that is then overlaid by using this mask. So here is defined where the background is um, replaced. So what is coming in here is it looks uh, the same at first, but this is the plate with the uh, fixed Thing here. So all these layers are just replacing these uh, markers. So this is the original footage. Then here you have the, the patches with uh, the clean plates without the, the markers in front of the sleeve and the jacket. And of course they all have to get the same noise pattern, which by the way is it's not really the film grain, but it's well, it's at least it's a bit noisy. So we have generated that as a noise group uh, using an image sequence and then overlay um, some brightness correction. So that is the noise. Um, so this is the clean plate with uh, the fixed sleeve. And later on in the shot, there will also be the rotor for the head. And that is then uh, saved as image sequence as open EXR with alpha channel. And if I go to the output, so this is OpenEXR half float, but most importantly RGBA so that we have the alpha channel. In this case, we had a little problem with that shot because it was a little bit last minute and then because of the workflow, splitting up the masking and doing everything. Um, well, at some point we were using the wrong dimensions. So what you can see here, 1920 by 800, this is the final movie dimension. But all the clean plates and all the original footage is 1920 by 1012. And in the main composite, we had to use that resolution to make it fit to the workflow and to be able to use, well, well, it just had to be the <laughs> correct dimensions. So because this is quite a complicated setup and well, it was a little bit last minute, so we had to come up with something quickly. Um, we were cheating a bit. So the clean sequence has been saved using this resolution. And then I created a new blend file, the mask 1012 combine.blend, um, where I've been just using the original 4K footage, scaling it to 1920 by 1012, and then overlaying or alpha overing our cleaned sequence. And because if I go back, um, because all the cleaning has been taking part uh, in the center of the frames, it was no problem just overlaying the cleaned image sequence over the originals. Um, and because we didn't change anything up here, that was working perfectly. So that's how we have been generating um, the, the clean file for this. And then we have been taking that into our main composite. So the main file is 12a, of course. And first I want to have a look at the uh, track. So before I continue, I have to switch the path to the footage so that it works locally here on my computer. Okay, so here's the footage. And as I told you before, the track didn't really work out. So what I did was to just use uh, 2D tracking. So I've tracked this feature on her arm. And well, <laughs> you cannot see it here because the this has been tracked on the original file, of course. But if this would not be the cleaned version, you would see here her hand. So I've been tracking one point there and then converting them to empties. So link empty to track and the resulting points should be somewhere here on one of these layers. So first of all, this is the armature for the file and one helper object. And then here, this should be, yeah, this is the track for the elbow. 
And then here is, um, yeah, so this is the track for the hand. And what I did was to use depth objects because just using a 2D uh, movement wouldn't be enough. So if you look at that in the 3D viewport, you can see that, well, it takes a while. If I go forward a bit, that this is still a 3D motion, even though it's just a 2D track. And to do that, I was using this helper object on this layer here. So this is representing more or less, I try to, the this radial movement of her arm, of her elbow. So when she is turning the arm, the hand would move backwards as well. So and try to simulate that by using this sphere. And then I was projecting the 2D tracks onto that depth object. So that is the HLP, the helper object, the wrist depth. And the, it's a bit crowded here, I have to admit. In. So uh, there it is. Okay, so this is now uh, moving on this depth object and thereby I could more or less simulate um, the movement of the arm and then just attaching the helper object and especially the armature to that. That helper object or the armature has been also animated to compensate for some of uh, the motion errors here. So that's how this works. Uh, well, and the rest is very simple. Uh, you have the, the robot hand and it's on layer two. And then there are some render layers also here. So this is the hand on layer two. Then to have some reflections, or actually in the end, I was just using ambient occlusion. So in the end, there is uh, one render layer to provide the shadow. And when that is rendered, um, you have here the footage with a clean plate and then there is um, the ambient occlusion layer, the shadow and um, this is something that I did um, to, to fake one of the shadows. So if you look here, you can see a little bit of a shadow here on this thing on the reflection. When she was moving her actual arm there, you couldn't see that, but I thought maybe to fake a little bit of the realism, we would need this shadow here. And the nice thing is that in the footage, there is one sequence here, where you can see that. So she's leaning forward and that generates this shadow or this reflection on the rail post. And I was using that by setting it off in the composite. So there's one mask for this edge or for this triangle of this post of this railing thing. Uh, well, I didn't render yet, so there's some error here. If I mute that, okay. So I was just using the footage, using a mask, and then using the same sequence, but with, an, with a frame offset, so that I was setting off the frames to the frame range where you could see that shadow. And then I had to tweak it a little bit uh, in the 2D space, so I was just creating a local offset. And then here, this would now generate uh, that shadow when she's moving her arm. We can quickly find out where that is. So this should be frame 296. So first here's the sequence together with that shadow. Then there's a little bit of offset so that it moves to the right position like so. And then by using this mask it is then being overlaid over the original footage and then there you have that fake shadow. And then here's the setup for the hand. So there's the hand layer, which I didn't render yet. Um, some denoising, um, color corrections, vector blur, a little bit of softening, then of course the 4K noise, alpha over, and that is then the finished composite. So that's how this file works. Um, well, the actual composite was the easiest part, the trickier part was the masking. So that's how 1-2-A works.